It's Wednesday, January the 20th, 2021. It is the date set aside in the church calendar for the commemoration of Sarah, the great matriarch, uh, wife of Abraham. And it's right that we would commemorate her, rejoice in this day. After all, the Lord has done great things through her, but also for her, because through her, he continues the line that leads to the Messiah uh, as she gives birth to Isaac. And from that line, we'll end up having Christ. Um, but also, not only is that through her, it's also for her, that she also is a recipient of the salvation that is won for us by Christ our Savior. On Wednesdays, we take a moment to uh, learn from the small catechism. So we are ready to move on in the catechism to its discussion of confession. Now, there's a couple ways that we use the word confession uh, biblically, and one of those is to confess the faith. That is not the one that is specifically referenced here. Uh, that is what we dealt with when it came to the creed. Uh, but rather here, confession is to confess our sins. And the first thing that the catechism takes up in this regard is to point out that confession has two parts. And you'll notice just by the volume of language, which one actually has greater accent? Which one has greater weight? Which one is the truly significant part? So the first of those two parts is that we confess our sins. Now, in Luther's day, when you're talking about confession, you're really talking about private confession and absolution, where the penitent would go before their pastor to confess sin. Uh, it's more in our age, we often think about the general confession that happens on Sunday morning within the divine service, and that's a, a very beneficial thing, and it's a good thing for us to have, but also it's a good thing that we still have private confession and absolution. We'll talk even more about that next week, but the first part of confession is that we just confess our sins. Now, notice the great deal of language, and I've even abbreviated it here for the second part. Second, we receive absolution, that is forgiveness, from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting but firmly believing that by it our sins are truly forgiven in heaven itself. Now, notice, therefore, just the weight that is given to absolution, forgiveness. That's what the real focus is, that the benefit of confession is not that I unload everything, although there is benefit in that, but the true benefit, the great benefit, the lasting benefit is found in the fact that my sin is forgiven for the sake of Christ. And when the pastor pronounces that, it, it comes from God himself. If you've engaged in private confession and absolution before, you'll find that in the rite itself, one of the questions that pastor asks is, do you believe that my forgiveness is God's forgiveness? After all, the pastor, if you're just getting his forgiveness, that's nice, but it's not going to do you eternal benefit. It is not going to unweigh your conscience. But when you get God's forgiveness, now you have freedom. And that's what the pastor is there to deliver, whether it is in the general confession on Sunday morning with the whole congregation or in private confession absolution. He's there to deliver God's forgiveness, one for, Christ, one for you by Christ. Now, that's why we even have all this language in the absolution, whether general or in the private, um, that language of, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So it's by their authority, not mine. And furthermore, we have language such as in the stead. So I'm standing in the place of and by the command. So I'm not doing it of my own volition, but by Christ's own command, I forgive you all your sin. So not mine, but God's forgiveness so that you can have that confidence. Now, this is similarly reflected in the two parts of repentance. Repentance also has two parts. The first part is contrition. This sorrow that we rightly have, that we have offended God, that we have sinned against him, also that we've sinned against our neighbor, we should have true sorrow for that. And that will be manifest in various ways. At times, our contrition is uh, overwhelming in emotion. At other times, the emotional uh, impact is not quite so present, but still there's true contrition because I acknowledge I should not have done that and look at the harm I've done, the offense I have given against my holy God. But the second part of repentance is this, faith. Faith that trusts in Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. So in this sense, true repentance can only be found in a Christian because any human being can have contrition. And rightly so, there our conscience is at work. 
but only a Christian can have faith in God for the forgiveness of sins for the sake of Christ. And that's the greater part of repentance. That's also why repentance brings joy in the end, because it's always driven to this faith that I am forgiven for the sake of Christ. Now, back to confession itself, the catechism takes up the question, well, what sins should we confess? And remember, the Catechism has in mind private confession and absolution, where you go to your pastor in private for that. Well, the, the catechism rightly points out, hey, don't try to enumerate all your sins. Well, that's for a lot of reasons. One, you can't name all your sins. There are plenty of sins that I commit every day that I'm oblivious to. There's others that I uh, am so casual that... I, it doesn't register with me that I realize at the moment, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But then an hour later, I'm not even thinking about it. So what sins should we confess? Well, the catechism talks about uh, what is weighing upon your heart. Or I would put it this way. Confess what burdens your conscience. And this also points to the great value of private confession and absolution. In the general confession absolution, we lay it all out there to say, hey, I've sinned in all ways. And then we receive forgiveness for it all. You're fully and freely forgiven. But there are times that the conscience remains burdened because of a specific sin. And so what do I need? I need to go to my pastor and speak that specific sin so I can receive absolution for that specific sin and thus be freed of the guilt, the shame that comes from that specific sin. That's the great value of private confession absolution. It's also why we don't mandate private confession absolution. You are not told you shall go to private confession absolution a certain number of times in a given time period. No, it's there as a gift. You go as you have need. As your conscience is burdened, go to your pastor, confess what is burdening your conscience, receive absolution for it, and then be freed from it. Now, getting back to what sin should we confess? Well, the catechism rightly follows up with the question, well, which are these? So what are these things that are burdening my conscience? Well, it goes on to describe, uh, give us a series of questions about how have I failed in various regards? But what it really boils down to is it's looking at your vocations. Who has God called you to be? So one way you could try to figure out what is truly burdening me? How have I sinned? Well, I've been called to be a husband to my wife. How have I failed in that regard? I've been called to be a, a father to my children. How have I failed to live up to that holy calling? I've been called to be a pastor of this congregation. In what ways have I failed in my duties and responsibilities? I've been called to be a citizen. That's maybe another one for us to think about. How have I failed in my calling as a citizen? And uh, not showing proper respect maybe to certain authorities, or also how I have not contributed to the general welfare of the nation. Another one could be uh, how I am called to be a son to my parents. How have I failed in that? And on down the line, the point is this. The doctrine of vocation is incredibly practical. It puts me in relation to my fellow human beings, and it tells me how I ought to live out my love for God in love towards them as well. But also it lets me see where I am in need of confession and receiving of Christ's absolution. And then I get to rejoice because Christ for forgives us fully and freely. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the good gift of confession. We give you thanks and praise that you hear our confession and you deliver absolution fully and freely, all for the sake of Christ. We know, O Lord, that absolution is not free. Though it costs us nothing, it has cost Christ his own life, his blood shed on the cross, but we also rejoice that he is risen to life everlasting, that he might pour out that absolution upon us for all times and in all days. In his name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you.